welcome back and in this episode we're going to dive deeper into the rescript uh, language we're going to learn a bit more about the type system about the expressions um, and see how they differ from JavaScript or TypeScript and for that we're going to build a quick um, react application and walk through it all right so let's dive right in so here I've got my IDE so let me uh, use the command to bootstrap a new application uh, npx create rescript app as usual so I'm going to open this project in uh, another window and let's clean up uh, what we don't really need so we don't really need these buttons we don't need this app css in order to save a little bit of time I have already prepared the uh, content for the app res and we're going to go through all these details as we explore our our application but before that let's actually run it so I'm going to run the rescript compiler in watch mode I'm going to run vite and given this URL let's paste it in the browser that's our application a uh, simple counter so the details of this application don't really matter it's just a counter but uh, let's talk about what happens in this in this file so first of all we're going to use the reducer pattern to make this application work and as we know uh, for that to work we're going to have a bit of a state and in this case it contains the counter integer and boolean for reset it's just a flag for actions I'm going to have three actions in in our application which is increment decrement and reset the first feature of the type system that I want to talk about is so-called algebraic data types so this type over here is known as product type and the reason why it is product is that if we count how many instances of object of this shape or values of this type we can construct we can see that this is going to be boolean from here times this integer hence the product type in other words this is true for all integers and false for all integers this type is called sum type and the reason for that is that if we count in how many ways we can construct actions that would be increment of some value plus decrement plus reset so we have either this option or this option or this option so there are only three ways to, to construct the value of type actions. It doesn't really matter that there is a type argument in this constructor because we're still going to use a type constructor to build a value of this type. By comparison, in TypeScript, we would write something like this and then uh, we'll probably get some sort of uh, variable with the type actions and then we would try to understand what kind of type of that actions we receive by comparing the strings. But that's not really pattern matching. And so the mental model for this um, actions type for some types of, in general is that we have this uh, type, like in our case, that actions, and we have different ways to construct it. So ink takes another type, int, and gives us the um, type actions. Um, same for dec, uh, which takes int, and then we can draw an arrow like this. Same for reset. It doesn't take any arguments, but if we use it, then it will also give us the type of actions. So when we receive the value of type actions, we need to figure out which of these um, constructors were used because technically that's the same int as this int and the only thing that sets them apart is the name of the constructor this is where we use the pattern matching and we do it right here in this function so in reducer function we use pattern matching with switch operator on action so now we can pattern match on them so if we receive this constructor we can go like that if we receive this constructor we take this branch if we receive this constructor we take this branch the beauty of pattern matching is that it is exhaustive in other words if i just comment out this whole thing i'll get a warning or error that we forgot to handle a possible case also notice that we didn't have to specify any types here the compiler could figure out that um, our function reducer fn is a function of state to action to state and this switch statement this pattern matching construct is an expression and it will return a value of a specific type and just as a side note i can completely disregard this x over here this integer that uh, this constructor holds and simply say plus 10 or or give any other value well any other value of type integer 
All right, moving on. So now we know that the dispatch function takes a value of type actions and gives us unit. So what is unit? Well, unit is sort of like a, a type with a single value and it's represented as brackets. So let x equals unit. So we can think of unit as undefined in JavaScript or void in C++. And again, I didn't really have to write any types or give any sort of generics uh, to use reducer simply because the compiler is smart enough to figure out that this would be a state action state and in it will be a state. In this sense, Rescript is a lot less verbose than TypeScript, which makes it a good choice for people who prefer JavaScript over TypeScript because of the type gymnastics that sometimes they have to perform. All right, moving on. So in this line, we can see that there is this interesting arrow here and it's called the pipe operator. And what it does is that it takes uh, the value in, in our case, state.counter passes it to this function. And then the result of this computation gets passed to this function, react.string. In other words, that is the same as if we just wrote it like this, but this way we could avoid having a lot of nested brackets. So the last thing here is the if statement. If statements in Rescript are expressions, meaning that they return a value. In this case, this if statement returns the value of react element. So what happens if we remove this else uh, branch, we will get the following error. It wanted the JSX element, but it, it got a unit. Well, why is that so? We spoke about unit already, that that's kind of like an undefined in JavaScript. But in this case, it actually wants the JSX element simply because the first branch returns the JSX element or React element. So what happens behind the scenes is that uh, Rescript assumes that this branch exists and it returns the unit. So that would be basically the same situation, except that the compiler is going to tell us that this is wrong, like this branch returns the uh, wrong value. And how we can fix this? Well, we can either return um, react.null and it would be all right, simply because null corresponds to React element, or we could return something a bit more meaningful, just like it was before. So why is it a big deal that if statement is an expression? Well, in reality, uh, this means that um, we reduce ambiguity in our code. Very often it happens that in, in our JavaScript or TypeScript programs, we omit the else branch completely. And what happens is that we perform certain action dependent on certain predicate. And what if that's false? In this case, this branching is not complete. So the booleans has uh, two values, true or false, and we have to define the behavior for, for both of them. And the documentation website actually confirms that. It says that, that this expression is going to type error because the if branch returns an int, but the else branch as shown here, implicitly returns a unit. So we have a type mismatch and if is an expression. So we're actually forced to handle both cases. And that leads us to another interesting aspect of Rescript's type system. So in TypeScript, we could write something like type A equals number or string. And this will not be possible in, in Rescript. The compiler doesn't even know how to handle this syntax. But if we try this in Rescript, let's say we have a type A and it's just a integer. Um, it will be okay. That would be like a type alias, but we cannot really do int or string. To circumvent this issue, we could go with some type. So let's say we have a business requirement that says that we might have an integer or a string. Let's say we parse the document and we might find ints or strings there. So in this case, we're going to create a couple of constructors. So int val for uh, integer or string val for string. Right. And that would be fine. So now if we have a value of this type A, so in order to handle this type A, we need to pattern match using the switch statement. And now we have to handle both cases. So something like that. So in my opinion, this limitation leads to a more self-documenting code because the business requirements are reflected in the names of the constructors and in the names of types. And even though we don't have to specify the types explicitly everywhere, the compiler is smart enough to figure out what's what. I hope this video was informative and I encourage you to look into the documentation for pattern matching, pipe operator, if else statements, tuples, and records. So thank you for staying with me so far and I hope to see you in the next one. Cheers.